booted into a live distribution CD of Ubuntu and I'm going to show you how to use Grub2 to boot an ISO image off your hard drive today. Uh, this is great for multiple reasons. One, you can install multiple ISOs onto your hard drive and choose them when you boot and they're like booting into a live CD so every time you restart your machine the system's fresh again and you can have multiple versions or distributions installed. A another great thing about this is that um, you as an administrator if you have people using a machine uh, you, they can use it, they can make modifications when it reboots it goes fresh but also if you want to do updates to the machine you use create an ISO on your hard drive add whatever changes you want and then you can SSH into that machine remotely and you can copy over the new ISO change the grub menu and the user using that machine it never gets interrupted it's zero downtime they just keep on working and then those changes you made next time the computer's rebooted whenever that is the changes will take effect and so you don't have to interrupt the user you don't have to you know bring the machine down for any updates not you, that you normally have to do that with Linux but um, let me get started <laughs> before I run out of time here um, I am going to be installing uh, to this hard drive here, it's an 8.6 gigabyte hard drive. It's blank now, but just to go through this from the beginning, we're going to format it and everything. So, I'm going to sudo fdisk device uh, sd1. So it's my first hard drive. I know that. Make sure you choose the proper hard drive for you, so you don't format the wrong hard drive. Uh, if I hit P, now that I'm an F-disk, it shows me all my partitions information on them. This one's already partitioned, but just to go through the steps, uh, I am going to go through them. I'm <laughs> going to hit D for delete. Uh, there's only one partition, so it automatically picks. I'm going to hit W to write. I like to do that before I make any changes. Now I go back into sudo F-disk, device, and my hard drive. And I'm going to hit N for new. I'm going to hit P for a primary hard uh, partition. I'm going to say one for the first primary partition and then these I'm just going to hit enter twice that just says start at the beginning of the hard drive and go all the way through the hard drive you can tell it a certain size if you want to make it a certain size and then we'll hit W for write so that's partitioning the hard drive now we need to format it and I'm going to format it in ext either three or two uh, format so I'm going to go make file system so mkfs uh, and we're going to do ext um, I'll go three and then device uh, and the partition so SDA1 because we want to format the partition oh got to sudo that sudo and we'll take a minute to partition it and almost there we're all partitioned now clear out the screen and just to make things easier pretty much everything we're going to do in this tutorial you have to be root and instead of typing sudo every time I'm going to type in sudo su so that now I am a root user uh, I am going to open up Firefox here and I'm going to get ready to download my ISO here in a moment um, but while I'm doing this I'm going to uh, mount that partition we just made so I'm going to mount device SDA1 and we'll just mount it to our uh, forward slash MNT because I'm not using that right now and uh, now we're going to install grub to that partition and actually while that's doing that I'm going to start downloading my ISO I'm going to use Slitaz in this tutorial but uh, you can use uh, do a lot of different distributions I'm going to give a link in the description bar below that will uh, give you uh, settings for Grub for a bunch of different distributions. So I'm going to go to slittaz.org. I'm going to choose English, download, and I'm going to download the cooking version, which is the unstable version, which means it's like the newest stuff, but may not be completely stable. But you would pick whatever distribution you want. It's only 30 megabytes, it's going to download pretty fast. But here, as root, we're going to go grub install dash dash no there's there's a space before that dash dash so dash dash no floppy space dash dash root dash directory equals and we have it mounted at 
uh, forward slash MNT, and then we got to give it the device, not the partition, but the device. So DV forward slash, and in this case, it's SDA, no number at the end there. We'll hit enter. It won't take long. It should say no errors. There we go. Grub is installed. So if we CD change directory to that hard drive and list, you'll see we have a boot folder now. Ignore the lost plus found folder. Anytime you make an EXT file system, it automatically puts that folder on there. Uh, so I'm going to CD into boot, and if I list that directory, you'll see that there is a grub uh, directory right there. Right now, we're going to make another directory in here. We're going to make dir, and we'll call it ISO. And this is where we're going to put our ISO image. So I'm going to go into there, and I'm going to copy, or I can even move, but I'll, I'll copy from the home directory download to where from where I just downloaded Slitas to to the present working directory. So now if I list you'll see that the ISO is in that folder which currently is MNT boot ISO. Let's clear out the screen and go back into the grub folder and Grub's all installed here. We have to create a file called uh, grub uh, dot f or cfg. So it's a grub config file. So we're going to use vim or by default in Ubuntu it's vim tiny. I don't really know the difference uh, but for what we're doing it seems the same. So vim tiny and we're going to go grub dot fcg or I'm sorry cfg and then we're going to start uh, creating this is going to be where our menu entries are so I'm gonna start menu entry and this is gonna be the name and you can name it whatever you want inside these quotations I would avoid special characters though I'm just gonna call it Slitaz cooking or xing zooking uh, there we go and we're gonna start off with a squiggly and everything in between these two squiggly brackets is going to be what the system is going to use to boot. So we're going to do a loop back, which is basically what's mounting the CD image. So loop back, space loop, forward slash boot, forward slash ISO. And this is just the directory to the ISO we just downloaded. So slitaz dash cooking dot ISO. And Everything I put in here is going to vary from distribution to distribution. Once again, in the description bar, I'll have a link to the settings for a bunch of different distributions. Now, we're going to, on the next line, we're going to say Linux, and we're going to tell it where the Linux kernel is. So Linux, and we're going to say it's on the loop that we just mounted, forward slash, no space between uh, this uh, loop and this forward slash, boot, and in this case, the kernel is going to be called VM L I N U Z dash. Now we have to find out the kernel version, and you need to check this uh, because in a couple of weeks there may be a new kernel version out, and, and you'll have to check this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our downloads folder, and this is where Slitz has it downloaded to, and in we're going to right click it and choose Open with Archive Mounter, and that will mount it over here as if it's a hard drive or CD. Click on that and we can go into boot and right here it's telling us that it's kernel 2.6.30.6. So let's type that into here. So it was 2.6.30.6 and then dash slitaz. So it's just the name of the file that's inside that image. Then we're going to go space iso dash scan forward slash file name equals and here again let's maximize this because it's going to be long we're going to go boot ISO we're just telling it again where the ISO image is uh, slitaz cooking dot ISO the next line uh, is going to tell it where the root file system is it's in a compressed uh, gzip file and here we're going to type I and I trd space loop forward slash boot forward slash root fs dot g 
GZ, and that's basically telling it to look for this file system right here. That's, that's the operating system after the kernel, it's the file system. So that's it. We are pretty much done as long as we typed all this right, uh, which it's very easy to type some of this wrong. And once again, if you had more than one ISO, you can put multiple entries in here and you'll be able to choose them when the computer starts up. So I'm going to save this file and I'm going to reboot. Now when we reboot, we should get a very basic grub screen with uh, an option that says Slitez Cooking, because that's what we named it. And once again, if I typed everything right, which I'm pretty sure I did, um, it will boot from the ISO. So really, besides the grub files, the only files on this hard drive is going to be that ISO image, that, that CD image. And um, what's great about this is, is unlike some other, like let's say you're running Windows, the only really way I know how to do something similar to this, and it isn't really the same, is using something called Deep Freeze. Um, and Deep Freeze doesn't really work because basically it prevents Windows from writing to the hard drive. Uh, you know, basically puts everything in some sort of virtual temporary file somewhere. But if you were to bypass Deep Freeze, which there are applications out there that disable Deep Freeze, uh, and, or if you were just to boot Linux, uh, you, you would completely bypass that and you can make changes to the hard drive. With this, it's a little more complicated. If someone wanted to make changes to that ISO image, they'd have to get the ISO image, mount it, change it, recompress the I ISO image, and then get back on that computer. I mean, it's not impossible, but you can make a partition that is encrypted and put the ISO on that, and that would completely keep people from messing with it. Uh, so I right there asked me my language and my keyboard setup. That's something Slitaz does all the time. Uh, one first boot, which every time we boot out of this ISO, it's going to be like a first boot. Uh, by default, username is Tux, password is blank. And here we are, we are booting off an ISO image, which is now running completely from RAM. Uh, if we were to make changes to this and reboot, uh, it, would, it would clear out all the changes. And um, once again, this is great because you have this set up like this and people are working on the machine and you want to make some changes, some updates, update all the software, you don't have to go to that machine and boot the user off, make the updates, re you know, basically you just remaster Slitaz or whatever distribution and make an ISO on your computer. You can SSH in, copy the new file over, change the grub file, and the user can keep working. They can be in Firefox, Office, whatever, doing whatever they need to be doing, and they don't, they don't even know that you've made the updates, and the updates will take effect next time the computer restarts. Zero downtime. Zero downtime. Uh, unlike uh, other applications, again, Deep Freeze, I mean, there's a lot of downtime with that, with that software. This is, uh, once again, one of two ways. This is the more advanced way, but it gives you a lot more options. Uh, then using the other way, if you watched my previous video, using UnetBootin to install a live image to a, a hard drive. Because that actually uncompresses, well it doesn't uncompress the file system, but it uncompresses, unzips the uh, ISO file. This, everything is still in that ISO file, and you can move it from computer to computer, or you can replace it, uh, and that's, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and once again it's a little more for advanced users, but uh, I if you're trying to do something like this, you probably are an advanced user. If not, check out the UNET Bootin. Uh, it's a much simpler way of doing it. Visit filmsbychris.com or bashscripts.info for more video tutorials like this. Have a great day.